Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to be testing KBS Diamond Finish Clear KBS in a spray can. Now, uh, normally I've tested and used Diamond KBS Diamond Clear in the can. Uh, hold on, let me show you what kind of can. Yeah, it was in uh, one of these type of cans, and it was in. Uh, this, this is a can of primer I just got from Duplicolor. I'll be testing. And um, I just got tired of opening up with the screwdriver and then it kept getting bent. And it was a little messy putting the lid back on. I poured it into this mason jar, uh, which is awesome. It seals it up. It's easier for me to open. It's airtight because it's, it's a mason jar. I just labeled it KBS. But uh, yeah, I've been airbrushing this. This is the thinner I use, their own thinner. Um, I was told I can use acetone or lack of thinner, um, and then somebody recommended only using theirs, but I'll be testing that at another point, but that's not the point of this video. The point is, I can now have it in a spray can for some of you guys out there who still just brush on or uh, spray can your stuff. I know I do a lot of airbrushing here, but I also do some spray cans, and if this is good, and it goes on as good as that, we have a winner. Now, unfortunately, this skyrocketed in price. I think it recently was over 40, 50 bucks. I originally paid like the mid 20s for this can. And boy, the last time I, I posted for you guys a link, it was close to 50. If not, it was 50. That's a little outrageous. These are 25 bucks a piece. Now, there's a lot in here. This is a big can. It's heavy, too. So I'll, um, at 50 bucks, you're going to get clear and get this satin finish. I didn't see satin finish in the can. Maybe it's out there. I didn't see it. But they have satin finish now um, in a spray can. So that's a bonus. So at 50 bucks, it looks like you're getting just about the same amount in here. And you can get two shades, you know, glossy and satin. So fingers crossed, this stuff works. Because if it does, um, sometimes I need to clear something quickly just for a test. Without having to mix anything up, I can just pull out this can and uh, use that. So I'm hoping it goes on nice and it dries just like this. Uh, so for the test, I think we'll see how it goes over plastic. So we use the same plastic part here from a Gumpla kit. So I'll do one shiny, the gloss, one satin. We'll see how that ends up. Then I got some pieces that are already matte colored. This is uh, Vallejo uh, Premium Airbrush Paint for the RC cars. I tested on this a while ago in a video, but it's flat. See, it's dull. So we'll put the gloss over that. See if it turns that to a nice glossy shade. Then I have like the shiny black spoon. We'll put the matte over the satin over that. And I have this spoon that's kind of dull. We'll put the gloss over that. And then I got some flat colors. Flat red. We'll put gloss on that. And we'll see how it goes over this armored Komodo. These are those powders that you buff in. I did a video on this too. We'll see how it coats that and if it doesn't peel it off at all. And uh, yeah, we'll try that. And I got a bunch of other spoons we'll test. There's a bunch of matte colors here. See them? So we'll put gloss on the matte colors and then on these shiny um, spoons here. I think I'm going to try and put the satin and see if we get that nice uh, anodized look that I've been working on. Now this is super dull matte. And this saying satin, I don't think it's going to be this dull. That's for sure. It's probably, you're probably still going to be able to kind of see the candy in it. It's my guess from my experience. So we will try that. I got a bunch of different colors we'll test. I got this shiny uh, auto paint. Um, I was testing. Beautiful color. We'll spray some satin over that and see how much it dulls it out. And then I got this. This is, I think, uh, Custom Creative. This is their solvent paste paint. This is a neon green. It's dull. We'll put gloss on it. But uh, anyway, that's the test. I'm just going to go through a bunch of these. I'll show you, uh, I'm going to show you before I came back to the bench here with all these uh, coated. And I think I'm going to go ahead and coat put a nice gloss coat over this it's not it looks shiny to you guys but it's almost like a it's like a dull gloss uh, this is um, SMS no this is splashes uh, auto colors uh, color change All right beautiful came out nice it just laid down beautifully I figured we'll go ahead we'll see how it lays out on this so we'll put a nice gloss coat over this kit too and um, this is my Tamiya my car uh, body holder. I love this thing. And we'll also go ahead and use the Tamiya anti-static brush. 
I'll brush that off before we go ahead and do it. Now it's kind of warmer I am here. I recommend you warm these cans up. So I would put them in hot water. And if you submerge them, put them in uh, another jar. But uh, put a plastic bag around them first. Um, I imagine these uh, labels would peel off if you put them in water. So put like this. You get a jar of hot water. Wrap this in a baggie and then put that in the hot water. Leave it for about a minute. It'll warm it up. It's pretty warm here. Now I've gotten these pretty warm waiting for the test. And the nozzles look like they're pretty nice. They're a flat type nozzle. It's hard to see here. But I think it goes on like a fan coating, which is awesome. Um, so fingers crossed it goes on nice. So uh, yeah, let's head over to the booth and uh, grab a bunch of these. And we'll see how it lays down. We'll see how it dries and we'll go over the results. All right, guys, here we are at the booth. Let's go ahead and start with the clear gloss, I should say. And we'll start off with this uh, dull black spoon. As a beginning, let's see what we get. Oh, it sprays nice, nice and misty. Oh, it goes on nice. It goes on really nice. Wow, look at that. I hope it dries like that. The whole point is to see how it dries. Let me put this aside. Wow, off to a good start. That went right on really nice. Um, all right, let's try this plastic piece. I'm gonna hit it with the anti-static brush. Quickly, quickly. All right, let's see what we get. All right, we'll put that aside. Looks like it laid down nice. There we go. All right, let's try this dull red spoon. What is this? Vallejo Model Air Red. There you go. We know exactly what it is. All right, well, there's a gloss right there. Wow. Now, it all depends on how it dries, you know, guys? You know, that's all it depends on. Let's see what this uh, Gumpla piece looks like. There we go. Now, it could lift up this paint. I don't know. That's why we're going to try and find out. I know it'll work good over solvent paints, no problem. All right, let's go again. All right. All right, let's try it over Armored Komodo buffing powders. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow, look at that. That is nice. All right, let's try it over this matte neon green spoon. All right. All right, here we go. Car body time. All right, I can see a lot of dust on this, so let's go ahead and dust it off. We have to hit it just before we hit it with the paint. The clear. There's a lot of stuff stuck to this thing. I should have rubbed it out. Probably should have sanded it first. Huh? I just want to see how it reacts. <laughs> We're not entering a contest with this. We're just testing it out. All right. Let's get my turntable out of the way. We'll go with this part here. Easier for me to hold it like this. All right, here we go. I think we got it. It is looking good. Can you see the difference in the shine? Wow. Um, man. All right. Well, as I said, it depends on how it dries. So, uh, let me put all this stuff aside. Maybe I'll put it in the dehydrator. Let me go grab the uh, satin coat, and we'll try that next. All right, guys. I realized, even though I'm coming in with the satin finish, it's going to look the same. <laughs> it's just still spraying a can in the in the booth. So I realized we go with the shiny one here. We realize <laughs> realize this is uh, a waste of time. <laughs> it's the same thing over and over. But uh, while we have this uh, E7 dark chrome, let's see what it will do to that. I'm curious. 
But yeah, this is kind of a waste, I guess. Uh, we'll just spray it on quick. All right, I gotta find a spot for this, hold on. I keep a magnet right next to the booth. Here's that auto paint. It's got a little bit of dust on it. All right, a little bit of candy. Anyway, you get the idea. We'll just let all this dry and uh, we'll check the results. I should have got some fishing lures. This is probably great for fishing lures, that's for sure. I should have uh, uh, got some and tested it on that. But, uh, hey, I thought of it too late. Anyway, guys, let's all these dry. I'll see you back at the bench. We'll go over the results. All right, first let's go over the results of the gloss. And I started with this black plastic spoon. Oh, you know what? Let me get one before it was sprayed. Hold on. All right, I grabbed one here. All right, that's before and after. This is how they come out of the box. I tried putting chrome on these, and it's just not shiny enough. But now I could put chrome over this for sure. And I will test this later with a, one of my chromes over it and see how it goes. Because this is also what you can do with chrome. If you have a black base of any kind, plastic, once you get a shiny coat on it, you can still put chrome on it. But yeah, that's the difference. You can see how sharp the light reflection is and that and how fuzzy it is in the one that's not coated. All right, over, what was this, Armored Komodo? Not bad. It worked. I was wondering if it would pull it up. It didn't. Uh, what else did we do? I did a bunch of off-camera. This is over uh, a lacquer red. Wow, it came out nice. This is over one of my silvers I'm testing. Look at that, how nice. And that was flat. And it's very smooth. You can feel it. And this is over, what was this? Uh, micro gloss covered uh, chrome. I think E7. Is that a reaction? I think that was on there. Um... Actually, not bad. It kind of left a, a, a good look there. I'll have to test this over some other chromes in the future. It's not great, but this was a, a poor piece. Just a piece I grabbed that was uh, not a final result. But at least it didn't do some bad reaction to it. So, yeah, it worked good. Now, it didn't work good on... Uh, here's some more I did off camera. Really nice. This is auto paint right here. This is real colors. Yep, AC Real Colors. AC Real Color, RC206. at the turquoise. Beautiful. Look at that. So it did like that. And it uh, did very well on the car. That's why you guys can't get the color change effect. It doesn't work great under these lights. Yeah, you can see the purple here a little bit. But yeah, it was, uh, it was friendly to the uh, SMS. I mean SMS. I always think of that when I think of the color change. This is, I believe this is Splash. Splash is color change paint. So, what it didn't like is, it didn't like Vallejo. It crackled up. It just didn't like it. This is the premium paint. And uh, I thought this was custom creative. It isn't. It, I think it's uh, one of my uh, Vallejo paints. Because I matched the color, it doesn't look like the same green. But it, this is gloss. Look how dull it is. It just absorbed right into it. So it absorbed into this, and it crackled up this. You know, so definitely needs a coating on it first, and then I would go in and hit it with it. It doesn't like the Gumpla plastic, in particular this one. Can you see it? So I wouldn't use it on that. Now, I didn't try other plastics, but I just grabbed this out of one of my kits, and uh, it was a no. So, uh, it's hard to say. It goes well over, I guess, these auto colors, in particular these lacquers. So, uh, it plays nice with them, for sure. And, it, it, you know what, though? It lays down nice. It dries nice. I look at it. There's no orange peel. There's no uh, sags to it, no runs. It's just perfect. So it does lay down really, really nice, particularly over a surface that it likes. 
that's over that. Now, I like this plastic, but I didn't like this plastic. So you never know what you're going to get. Your mileage may vary. But let me clear this off and look at the, the satin one next. All right, here we are with the satin finish. All right. Uh, I got a couple of comparisons. First, let's go with the black. It looks like it didn't do any. Well, no, it's semi-gloss, which is basically what satin is. Let me get the gloss one. Yeah, see it. You can kind of see what you're getting right there. Kind of like rubber. If you want to paint something rubber, you would paint this over the black because rubber doesn't shine at all, so it kind of absorbs the light. Now here it is over. I can show you the two here. All right. Obviously, which one has the satin over it. And there is a before and after right there. All right. This is it over candy. I believe this is uh, Vallejo Chrome. I get that label. Oh, with uh, Tamiya. Hold on. It's right here. It happens to be right in the bench. Tamiya clear blue over the top. And then I put the satin over it. You know what? It looks good. Here is the one I did with uh, SMS flat clear. That spoon is right here. There we go. So there you, there's your difference. Not bad. I do like it. Yeah, a little bit of the candy shine coming through, just a bit. Whereas this is dulled right out like it's a complete anodized colored metal. So yeah, there's your difference. I like it. it Make for a good two-tone kit too. Yeah, so this is the flat clear. So that's totally flat. And there you go. There's satin. So you can see the difference in satin versus matte right there. Great comparison. This is it over the Armored Komodo. Dulled it out. Where's the one for... I don't see it anymore. Oh, here it is. Yeah, it brought the sparkles out of it. The clear did. And this one kind of dulled it. So you really can see it there. All right, not much else to go here. Here it is over the green, same thing. Vallejo Chrome Base with Tamiya Clear Green on top. Let's grab the other one. There you go. Yes, yeah, so you're getting that. Yeah, it looks good. It makes a nice effect. And it seemed to have uh, dried nice over the Tamiya. This is over orange. It's kind of close to my other one. They're different, by the way. Let me show you how different they are. See, it? it's a different color altogether. Pantone Red, I think this is. This might be a tester's orange, I think. This is over... I don't know what that is. All clad chrome base with a clear purple on top. Kind of changed it a bit. It's weird. Kind of reacted to this one. I don't know why. But it does look great here, that's for sure. And you can see the difference here over this. So you really get to see the difference in what it does. So yeah, there you go. Now, the good thing is, it worked. It sprayed nice, it dried nice, no orange peel. So, uh, it got the job done. And uh, 25 bucks a can seems high, but this, this is going to last an extremely long time. I'll tell you right now. Um, and with the cost of one can of the just the gloss, going at almost 50 bucks, 50 for the two, is great. Of course, if you're not even going to use both. You have more uses than one or the other, and you're only going to drop about 25 bucks. And this really is at least double the size of the little cans that we get from Tamiya. Let me see how big. Hold on one second. A whole rack of Tamiya back here. All right. So there you go. Um, millimeters? Oh, it doesn't have it. It just has it in millimeters. Everybody knows what 16 ounces is? Anyway, that looks like about three times the size. It's even a smaller diameter, too. Yep, much smaller. Yeah, it's at least three times the size. These are almost 10, 20, 30 bucks. So you get three of these, you're almost at 30 bucks. So at 25, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, guys. So uh, I'll put a link below to uh, where I got these. I think I got them on Amazon. I think I did. Um, yeah, I'll put a link below to the uh, anti-static brush and this awesome base. I don't talk about this enough, but this, to me, uh, Base. You get everything with the kit, you know, you get this stand, you get this, you get the spring loaded to hold the body on, you adjust the tension depending on the size of the kits, and in here, you see these slots right here, it comes with these clips, and you clip them in here, and then you can actually clip other parts, 
you know, to that, and then you can spray without even touching anything. You hold it up. So the, this is a really, really, really must-have, particularly if you're building car kits, is this, to me, a base and uh, a spraying stand. I love this thing. I, I think it's only 25 bucks. It's under 30 bucks, and I use it often. And, uh, yeah, it, it's a must-have. I'll put a link to this below also, and uh, along with the brush and the paints. And, uh, yeah, there you go, guys. Um, head over to my community section with my uh, where I take pictures and show them off. I've got uh, my buddy's power metal band up there, Quantum Twilight. I'm going to give away a couple of signed copies of the album. And uh, I believe it's Galactic Intergalactic Onslaught is inspired by the original Gundam animation. The one from 79 with the RX-78 in it. Uh, if you like if you like Dragon Force, you will like that. Absolutely for sure. Quality stuff. And um, coming up soon, hopefully next, is my test of these all new, this brand new company, Gallery. G A A H L E R I. Gallery airbrushes. And I believe they're sending me the compressor and a whole kit also. So we're going to be testing all of these. Our early test, very impressive. I mean, these aren't cheap. They're not uh, cheap $20 ones you get on Amazon. Uh, these are. These are high-quality airbrushes uh, to compete with the, the brand names. And uh, we'll be going through these. I think you guys are going to be uh, pretty happy with these. And uh, this is probably going to be the next video, I hope, uh, to be the next video. In the next couple days, we're cranking them out here, guys. We're cranking them out. Anyway, guys, uh, please, if you want, join my Patreon. I'll put the link below. And uh, as I say every time with the video, I uh, demo paints for you, or I'll answer your paint questions on video form, or we can text back and forth and chat using my Patreon channel. Um, the link below, very cheap. I think I got it set for $4 a month, and uh, it helps the channel greatly. And uh, anyway, guys, please like the video. It's big. puts us in the algorithm. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell notification so uh, you know when I put a new video up. I try to do two a week, and I've been doing pretty good lately. And... Uh, tons more to go we have a lot of stuff to go i'm still working on the silver paint test that's going to take a while it's going to take weeks but we're going to test every silver paint we can um that's out there and that's it all right guys i want you guys to have a great rest of your weekend don't forget i'll put links to everything no link to michigan j frog i found him looking for something so i stuck him on the desk big fan of that particular looney tune warner brothers cartoon and uh there's always a reason why something's on the desk i also Love Hawks, my favorite character in My Hero Academia. And actually, they're featuring a lot this particular season. So uh, go ahead and watch the show. Uh, it's phenomenal, particularly this season. It's really built up slowly. It almost seemed like a kid's anime till we reached this season. And uh, All Out War, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal season of anime. Really enjoying it. But uh, I do love the Hawks character quite a bit. So anyway, guys, there's a little backstory for stuff hanging around. On the, the back wall here. Anyway, guys, I'll see you soon. Probably in the next video. I hope to have these gallery airbrushes tested. I might even have more products for them by then. So maybe we'll do them all in one video. Or we'll do two separate videos. Because I know I'm getting a compressor to test too. Which I love to test. Anyway, guys, you guys are absolutely the best. God bless you all. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you in the next video.